As a person who grew up on a farm in the bush, and as someone who has seen the best and worst of times in most parts of this state and northeastern Victoria, I've come to the conclusion that rural and regional Australia has been that poorly served politically in the last two decades that now all Australians will end up paying the price. For a person that viewed the 25 years I lived in rural and regional Australia as one of the greatest privileges I've been afforded in my life, it is exceptionally sad. It's always amazed me that our food bowl has never been seen as a treasured resource. Yet people make a mess in their pants over an iron ore or coal seam gas mine or some other mining project, particularly the big end of town busoids who really would not know if a train was up them till the passengers got out. But let me assure everyone, it doesn't matter how much gas, iron ore, uranium, copper or whatever you mine, if you can't put food in your mouth to keep the level of obesity in this country at its staggeringly high level, then all the minerals in the world are worth zilcho. A prime example of this is how China is currently pulling down Australia's pants, smacking its bare bottom, and to be quite frank, deservedly so, as it devours our agricultural assets while the unhinged right of the Liberal Party run around lauding some supposed free trade deal with countries of which we are all supposed to be so excited about that it's not even worth giving us the details. Of course, the right-wing commentary it was going to have verbal orgasms over the deal, and any dissenting voices are chopped down with labels like anti-business, xenophobe or racist. The dissenting voices, and there are many within the coalition who are against this deal and against the foreign takeover of our prime agricultural assets, are rendered useless because they end up being railroaded by ideologues who believe everything has a price signal, the coalition's catchphrase at the moment. Let's be real here, the Labor Party's no better. They've constantly watched rural and regional Australia decline, seeing it as largely not their constituency and phony attempts to change that, like the birth of country labour a few years ago, etc., have failed dismally. But the coalition has been extraordinarily disappointing, and as a result, all Australians will suffer downstream from the tawdry governments we've had in Canberra over a long period of time. At a federal level, they have sat idly by as banks behave immorally, they have cut the funding to the CSIRO to pieces, they have made no attempt to rein in the rampant thievery of the two major supermarket chains and check their immoral behaviour. And worst of all, they are allowing the sale of our food bowl from under our feet without a qualm. This is not good economic sense. It is right-wing vandalism that will affect everyone in years to come. To their credit, people such as Alan Jones, Senator Bill Heffernan, Barnaby Joyce in another lifetime, Bob Catter, Tony Windsor and others have warned of the consequences of the perilous path the governments has placed rural and regional Australia on for a very long time. But here's the rub. The real fault lies with us, everyday Australians, and for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, we have continually elected totally incompetent governments in recent years. Rudd, Gillard and Abbott are prime examples. And unfortunately, that looks set to continue at the next election, whether Abbott or Shorten are elected. Secondly, along with the government, we have in the main sat back and watched the major supermarket chains in Australia drive our farmers to the wall. It's not like we didn't know the terrible shellacking the major supermarkets have given farmers. And if you didn't, you're just plain dumb and not on the planet. Thirdly, Australians by and large will not invest in rural and regional Australian projects. Ten years ago, I was begging Australian top end of towners to invest in rural and regional projects, but they preferred much more greedy pursuits like Storm Financial, Timber Corp, Australian Medical Imaging, Subprime Mortgages, Commonwealth Bank Financial Planning Rorts, etc. And many exactly got their right whack. If a dunce like me could see the emerging markets in Asia and with that a better outcome at the Australian farm gate, then why couldn't the supposedly smart business boffins in this country? I held seminars on rural and regional investment in both the New South Wales and federal parliaments, banging the drum for the future of rural and regional Australia and the world-class product it produces. I've travelled the length and breadth of this state and most of northeastern Victoria. I've been to China several times to places like Mengzhou, Yongling, etc. that most Chinese have never even been to to study the emerging dairy market, cattle feed lots, the latest technologies in wool blending, fish farming, etc. I met with numerous politicians of both ilks, 
got a lot of vacuous rhetoric, but no real action off any of them. I also sat with Australian farming groups such as Wool Connect and the Yass Wool Growers urging farmers to stay in the food and product chain beyond the farm gate and to partner with the Chinese as that is where their future lie. Not in producing a dollar a litre milk for greedy supermarket chains or merely handing over their wool clip to Chinese manufacturing. I even chartered a bus to take a group of Australian wool growers to Albury to see how we could better work together to save one of the last, at that, at that stage, one of the last remaining major scouring works. I spoke to Rotary Clubs, Lion Clubs, farming groups in small country halls, anywhere I could get a microphone and an audience, I would turn up to tell them in no uncertain terms that Asia was our future market and encourage partnerships with Asian companies, not total buyouts. I started this conversation with federal senators and farmers way back in 1999, and you would have sworn I was speaking a foreign language. I took delegations of Australian farmers to China, Singapore and Malaysia, and went with politicians to Asia to highlight the void that was there for Australia to fill. But the old she'll be right made attitude kicked in and for many it was all just too hard. Well, for the Chinese, providing food security for their population is not that hard. They just simply buy us out at a time like now when the economy is fragile, the future of agriculture when the market is domestic is weak, and farmers have just given up getting a decent price for their product in the domestic marketplace. So good luck to China, as Australians again will cop their right whack downstream for this. The escalation of the Chinese purchase of Australian dairies is a prime example. Currently Norco is able to fly fresh milk out of Australia every day to China, which is fetching, fetching between 7 and 11 bucks a litre on the Chinese market. Very soon not one of those dairies in southwestern Victoria or Tasmania will be producing for the domestic market. Every skerrick of product will go to the Chinese market and they've not stopped buying yet. Alan Jones recently highlighted the Chinese doing deals with the morally bankrupt at best and downright corrupt at worst banks in central western Queensland to force farmers off their properties when they had not missed one mortgage payment. How so? Simply revalue the property mid-mortgage, consider it a bad risk and force, force the farmers off the land as the Chinese are ready to buy them. Unconscionable, but hey, welcome to business bank style. Jones's campaign would have a lot of banks and politicians wearing incontinence pads at the moment as the political complacency in kowtowing to the big banks becomes evident and the behaviour of the banks shows that despite all the spin, they've not changed. This is not a left or right argument. There are very few things I have in common with Alan Jones but he has been absolutely bang on the money in his campaign against coal seam gas mining, the big banks, the stupidity of the free trade agreement and government treatment of rural and regional issues. But credit where credit's due and Jones has been fearless in taking the argument right up to his conservative allies, calling the situation capitalism at its worst and he has been af not afraid to rip into the banks, the government, the Prime Minister, the Treasurer without taking a backward step. Jones's efforts in this regard have been non pareil He got it bang on again this morning when he called the government's free trade deal with China as bullshit and wrapped in bullshit. China is now the live, in the live export trade. I know of Chinese companies that are buying Australian stock with the name of breeding in China, slaughtering and boxing beef and down the track competing with us in our own markets in the Middle East. And they will do it well leaving us to watch them sell our beef to our markets. Gee, now that's clever. Well done, Australia. The buyout of Australian prime agricultural assets is only going to accelerate, and this bunch of dullards in Canberra can't even tell us how much they've bought. There's simply no such register. These idiots in Canberra do not even know who owns our food bowl or how much of it. As Australians got more complacent and dumber, waiting for the next tax cut and seeing what each budget does for their own bottom line, Australians are fast heading towards being renters in their own country. No one can begrudge Aussie farmers now for selling prime assets to China and walking away from their land with a buck in their pocket, as they've bled to death at the hands of governments and supermarket chains for years not to mention having to put up with the vagaries of farming such as drought, insect plagues, floods, etc. I get their drift. 
but it's a great pity that we did not take a stand years ago and concentrate on selling the product and not the farm. One only has to look at the Australian wool industry and China's almost complete takeover in the last decade. Australia has backed away from milling, they all closed, we got out of having our own scouring works, they all closed, and eventually China was fully geared up to treat wool and we were totally dependent on their purchasing the stockpile as we could no longer scour or mill it here. So now they blend fine Australian wools with domestic and coarser wool and have degraded the value of our wool product. In the not too distant future it will be Australians that are drinking UHT as fresh milk will be in short supply and unaffordable for most. Our beef and lamb will be dearer because if we're not prepared to pay the price for it, China will. It is interesting to note that Gina Reinhardt is aggregating cattle properties in WA, as is Tiggy Forest, to service the Chinese beef market. Reinhardt is also dropping $500 million into a baby formula product in Queens project in Queensland, again aimed totally at the Chinese market. These business people were not going to invest in agriculture in Australia while ever they knew the main source of business was the domestic market. Why? Simply because there was no money in producing food for Woolworths and Coles. Our seafood will consist of more and more exports from nearby neighbours that have both questionable processing and cleanliness issues. It will be Australians eating the button-sized Thai mangoes and our supermarkets will face changes where mostly they are selling imports. It won't matter to them though. They will just be able to rip the lazy Aussie shopper off further as their profit margin goes up, up and staying up. I'm staggered when I see people with loaded shopping trolleys getting everything in Coles or Woolworths, totally ignoring Australian fish markets, butchers, fruit barns, as they're simply too flabby and lazy to push their trolley from shop to shop in the mall in case they lose some of the fat on their bum and have to breathe at a rapid rate more than being in a coma. I fall around in laughter when I hear people use the term the lucky country, which has become part of the Australian vernacular since Donald Horn wrote his famous tome in 1964. Funny, no one actually uses the rest of the quote attached to the lucky country by Horn. It was simply, Australia is the lucky country run mainly by second-rate people who share in its luck. Gosh, if they were second rate in 1964, this current lot on both sides of the chamber would not even register on Horn's scale. It's become abundantly clear that we cannot depend on politicians in Canberra to protect Australia's food security. And sadly, it's also become abundantly clear that we don't have the foresight, get up and go an entrepreneurial spirit to do it ourselves. I can understand the police not being helpful. After all, in the main, they're just professional beggars, parasites and bludgers who breathe rarefied air and live well above their stations. There are many things to worry about, like bludging money, stacking branches, assassinating opponents within their own party, leaking to the media on colleagues, collating dirt files on people. So they are really busy, with a Lasseter's load of spite and self-absorption running through their bodies. You could tell by the hangdog look on Barnaby Joyce's face at last week's Winton Last Stand meeting that he knew what needs to be done, he knew what should be done, but he also knew that common sense would be stymied in Canberra by the right-wing nutters in this coalition government. We saw the electoral handiwork of the right put to the test in the recent Victorian state election when the coalition got their payback from the voters in Shepparton and the safe coalition seat went to an independent over the right wing's refusal to assist in the SPC Ardmona in Broglio. It may well be time for the National Party to break out of a formal coalition with the Liberals while ever right wing nutters have their hands on the wheels of power and get back to being a grassroots country party that doesn't allow themselves to be emasculated by the unhinged right. Or they will simply see a lot of their power base gone anyway as high profile independents start picking up their rural seats. The fact that Australians just seem to be prepared to sit by and watch their food bowl taken from under their noses really galls me. But in the end, Australians will get their right whack and buy the living jingies, listen to them whinge then.